Look who just it's jumped in the car. Just... <laughs> Surprise! So in case people don't know, because there are truly some people that don't know, this is my sister Ellie. She lives by me. And then several hours away, these two live next to each other. <laughs> and this is Ruby and Julie. Hey guys. Hello. And we are all on the socials. So I'll put them in the, <laughs> so I'll put them in the description below for you guys. Bonnie Holine, Ruby Frankie's sister, deletes another YouTube video. Back in September, Bonnie posted this video, my statement on my sister Ruby Frankie, and deleted this video a short time after posting it. I covered this over a month ago and I have some of Bonnie's video and I shared it in my video titled Ruby Frankie's Sister Speaks Out Bonnie Holine's deleted video. I'll link that video here in case you haven't heard what Bonnie said in her first video made about her sister Ruby. Since Ruby was arrested back in August, every video Bonnie has put out on YouTube has mentioned her sister Ruby in some way, shape, or form. And because of this, Bonnie is attracting a lot of viewers to her channel and she's pulling in massive views right now. In September, Bonnie's YouTube channel grew by 10,000 subscribers and she received over 2.5 million views in September on her YouTube channel. Bonnie has made over $20,000 just on YouTube for the month of September. I don't think the videos about Ruby and her family are going to stop anytime soon because the amount of money Bonnie's making right now is going to motivate her to make more of these videos. On October 11th, 2023, Bonnie posted this video to her YouTube channel. Bonnie deleted this video a short time after she posted it. Over on the 8 Passenger Snark Reddit thread, they give a detailed summary of Bonnie's deleted video. She starts off the video by explaining that the last few weeks have been emotionally taxing on her and her family. Multiple Netflix producers have reached out about filming a docu-series. She states that the one reason she would consider agreeing to do a docu-series is to tell her side of the story, but notes that in reality, there is just so much legal that goes into it. There's so much PR that goes into it, and that is not something I feel like any of us could really handle. She goes on to further state that if she desires her side of the story to be shared, she will share it on her own platform. She states throughout this video that she will be providing a timeline of her life concerning Ruby. She begins the timeline by explaining they had a good childhood, that it was all one could really ask for. She added a text box stating, we were given all the basics and beyond. We knew we were loved. We had so many great experiences growing up. She goes on to state that the way she interacted with Ruby was different than the way she interacted with Ellie and Julie. She mentions that everyone has different personalities and that she enjoyed that aspect of her family because it makes them who they are. She states that while growing up, Ruby hated to share which she describes as not necessarily a terrible thing. It was just what made Ruby, Ruby. Most arguments she had with her sisters were typical arguments between teenage sisters. From comparing her relationship with her siblings to the relationship her parents have with their siblings, she had hoped the adolescent fighting with her siblings would also translate to a strong and healthy adult relationship. She goes on to state that after Ruby had children, their frequent communications had decreased. She hypothesizes that this could have been related to Ruby's postpartum experiences. As such, Bonnie began getting closer to her other sisters. She goes on to recall a time when Ruby was flabbergasted that Bonnie took a bath with her infant. Ruby then went on to say, I want another baby so I can take a bath with a baby. Bonnie then describes Ruby as competitive. At some point, Bonnie asked Ruby, why do you want another one? Bonnie explained that she could see the stress Ruby was under with the children she had. As a response, Ruby stated, well, mom had five, so I can have six. Growing up, the Griffith sisters had taken up piano. Throughout their piano endeavors, Ruby sought to be the best rather than enjoy the experience. Growing up, Bonnie reflects on the structure of their relationship she had with Julie and Ellie. With Julie and Ellie, the three of them were each other's protectors and support systems. Rather than take a self-centered approach, they cared more about the other person's needs being met. She uses the information displayed in the previous nation to segue into explaining her experiences with Ruby's selfishness and competitiveness. Bonnie goes further to explain that Ruby's habits and inclinations make it hard for her to form long-lasting friendships with people. 
She goes on to state that in adulthood, Ruby was never able to make long-lasting friends. Bonnie goes on to explain she feels her mother catered to Ruby. Growing up with an aunt who requires extended and specialized care, Bonnie was taught by her parents that not everyone has the same capabilities or abilities in life. She used this lesson from her parents to better understand Ruby. To quote, Ruby didn't have the same capacity to be compassionate or selfless as the rest of us. And so... Where one person lacks, the other person picks up the slack, and that's what you do with family. Bonnie states that Ruby put a lot of unnecessary pressure on herself to be more than she could reasonably be, much like Bo. Ruby took AP classes. Bonnie feels that Ruby felt like she had to force herself to do more than what she was capable of. In their teenage years, Bonnie ran from Miss Roy. When she asked Ruby if she would help her make a dress for the competition, Ruby's response was, well, why didn't I get to run for Miss Roy? Bonnie believes that Ruby's inclination to follow whatever is most popular at the time and inability to see her own self-worth is how she was drawn into the current situation. Ruby always wanted to be the best at whatever everyone was doing at the time, whether that be vlogging, subscriber counts, views, etc., Ruby was never content with life. She always had to be working towards the next bigger and better thing, regardless of if it was harmful. Later in the video, Bonnie posits that she believes Ruby lacks the self-confidence needed to make sound and secure decisions. Bonnie then segues into discussing Ruby cutting off the family. Sue begins this with a text box that states, when she cut our family off, she used a lot of the lies she made up as reasons she was cutting us off. Bonnie points out that Ruby named her firstborn son Chad after their father. She posited that she doesn't believe that Ruby would have done that if she didn't love and appreciate her father. Bonnie closes this video with the hopes that it provides clarity into what it was like to grow up with Ruby. The final screen of the video is four text boxes. The first one states, I believe that Jody saw how insecure Ruby was and she preyed on her. Jody groomed Ruby into what Jody wanted Ruby to be. With that said, Ruby is still 100% responsible for her actions. The second states, I believe that Ruby saw an opportunity to be one of the top dogs of connections, especially when she wasn't doing well on YouTube anymore. So her competitiveness kicked in. The third states, I believe Ruby has had a hard time thinking for herself or feeling content with what she has. So it was easy for Jody to step in and just tell her exactly what to think. The fourth, I believe Ruby wanted to have a story or a trauma that she could tell Jody, but simply didn't have one. Or Jody forced her into telling her lies about our family, which Jody is known for doing. Ruby selfishly made up stories about our family. Let's read a few comments that were left on Reddit about Bonnie's video and let me know if you agree with them. Jennifer and Chad made her take it down. No, I bet her PR team did it. It was deleted pretty quick for her parents to properly watch, but you never know. All of her videos on YouTube have the comments turned off now. It appears she's trying to profit on the circumstances. Even if it's innocent, it just isn't right. It makes her look bad. This is going exactly how I thought it would. The siblings will use the tragedy to make content on their own channels for as long as it stays in the news cycle. Except it's not the siblings, just Bonnie so far. The other may join in at some point, but for now, they're doing the responsible thing and keeping quiet. Other than Bonnie... Ruby's sister Julie is the only one to put out a YouTube video, and she posted this video four weeks ago. It has over a half a million views. Just a reminder, nobody can say or prove that what Bonnie shared isn't true. It's her experience growing up with Ruby as a sister that none of us had. We cannot say it happened otherwise. Next, I want to show you a video of Bonnie talking about the Connections podcast. She's sitting in her car talking. She seems a little stressed out, but she states she listened to the Connection podcast for over an hour and a half. Uh, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be doing these things. I should have taken a moment this morning. I can hardly focus. I thought that I was unfrustrated, but now I'm like immediately all my frustrations are back I'm gonna tell you what I did on the drive down or what I listened to on the drive down I cannot handle this noise okay I listened to the connections podcast it's a big X I listened to the connections podcast for like an hour and a half I'm letting my kids 
What are your thoughts on Bonnie's deleted video? And why do you think she took it down? Bonnie is now saying she believes Jody preyed on Ruby and Kevin's sister-in-law said he was brainwashed by Jody. What do you think? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching YouTuber Headlines. See you in this video next.